things that they were channels. A priest was a channel through God. That they literally could speak to God for the people. He was an intercessor. He literally discovered the God's will for people's lives. He was a channel that God can move through. And I want to encourage you that God desires that you be a channel. God desires that when you open your mouth, it's the voice of God coming out your mouth. God desires that you be a channel, a conduit, that God's Spirit will move right through you into other people's lives. And it's very, very important that we, you and I understand that we are called still to be literally to be a, a priest in it. They help, they help people discover the will of God for their lives. And all of our jobs is to say, listen, I just don't want to be saved and care about my own life. But I want to help other people out. There's one thing I always tell people, and I see, you probably hear me say this all the time. I know life that someone put their arm around me and said, listen, I'll show you God. I'll make you understand the word of God. I'll help you on your way. I'll, I will be there for you. If you fall, I'll pick you up. I had somebody do that in my life, and I still have that with my headship, with my pastor, and with many other people inside my life. But I'm here to tell you that I'm a life that's been spared because somebody put their arms around me. And someone said, I know you don't know, but you're going to know God for now on. I know you don't understand, but I'm going to make you understand the will of God. It's very important that we become the priest that God has called us to be. Whether you're a woman or whether you're a man, you're called to be a priest of God. It was a seven-day ritual in Exodus 29. You begin to read something powerful. It says, the son that is a priest in his stead shall put them on seven days when he comes to the tabernacle of the congregation to minister in the holy place. They literally were examined. They really, literally were looked at their lives. Be a priest, you just couldn't walk up to be a priest. You had to be a son of Aaron or a descendant of Aaron. But they looked at you. They examined you. They wanted to make sure this guy is going to lead a lot of people to God. This guy is going to be a voice of God, an oracle of God. This guy is going to be a letter of God. We've got to examine this guy. It was a seven-day ritual. Not only that, but the Bible shows you that right, they were stripped down and they were washed with water. We read it in Exodus 40, 12. And thou shalt bring Aaron and his sons to the door of the tabernacle and the congregation and wash them with the water. They were literally stripped down naked and they were washed with the water of God. They were washed and made sure they were clean. They were made sure they were examined. They were made sure there was no blemishes on their lives at all. And it's very important that we don't get that. We don't do that nowadays. But we still get stripped down spiritually and allow the Word of God to wash us today. We still sit there, as Paul says, examine yourself to see if you're in the faith. We still sit there and say, God, I want to be a vessel, God, that you can use. And if you're going to use me, God, literally look at me, God. Examine me, God. Is there anything, God, that is not right in here? And if it's not, God, I want you to help me. I want you to take it out. I want to forgive God. I want to ask and repent God. I want you to wash me with the water of your word. Amen. It's very important that we allow the Spirit of God to wash us today. Now I say all this to say this in Old Testament times, in order to be a priest, you couldn't have no physical defects at all. And what I want to minister today is very important because you know you've got to understand something today. I'm not saying that we're living by the Old Testament times. Everything in the Old Testament was done physically. When you went out and killed an enemy, you literally killed an enemy. When you went out and, and did certain things and you and you asked for his sins, you would actually brought a sacrifice and you brought a real animal there and you killed it and the blood was sprinkled over you physically. And the Old Testament, you look at it, everything was done physically. In the New Testament, everything is done spiritually, but it's still literally the same thing, but it's done spiritually. No longer do we sit there and have to kill animals. Our Lord and our Savior came down and became the ultimate sacrifice. And the day that you get saved, you might not see it at all, but the blood of Jesus is sprinkled all over your body. You don't see it physically, but in the spiritual realm, the blood of Jesus is all over your life. In the spiritual realm, there are many things taking place. We don't sit there and strip down naked physically no more at all. But in the spirit, we get naked. In the spirit, we say, man, God, will you wash the hidden areas of my life? Will you begin to cleanse me so I can be a vessel, God, that is literally God holy before you, God, so I can be used for you, God? In Old Testament times, they literally looked at these things. And I want to give you some things here because they looked at a lot of things. They looked at Old Testament times in order to be a priest. You could not have any physical defects to be used in the ministry of God. Now I say this because we're not looking at this physical no more. We're looking at the spiritual. And I thought about this as powerful today. But what is a defect? A defect is a lack of something necessary for completeness. A shortcoming, an imperfection, a fault, a flaw, a blemish. Something that is essential missing. A detail that detracts from perfection. And God literally looked at, at the priests and he would examine them. He would look at their lives. So if they were a priest, it didn't mean they weren't saved. But if God was going to use them, God said, listen, I want to make sure there's no defects in your life at all. And it's very important. We're not, not talking about a physical defect today. I want to talk to you about some spiritual defects that mess up a lot of people's lives. I want to talk 
power for the saved and even the unsaved today. Because if you're unsaved today, let me tell you something. The defects you have in your life, God wants to heal you. God wants to forgive you. God wants to help you. All these defects that I'm going to talk about today, I had them all in my life. I had them all in my life when I came to God. I was defected. I was hurt. I was abused. I was messed up. I was sad. I was beaten up. I was depressed. I was addicted to all kinds of stuff in my life. But when the Spirit of God began to come in, I came to God a mess. I said, God, I'm full of defects. I'm full of messed up things. I'm dirty. I'm messed up. I'm lost. I'm down. I'm on the way to hell. God, help me, God, please. And the Spirit of God began to help me, and it still helps me every single day. So if you're not saved today, you live in these defects, God can save you. God can help you. God can restore you. God can do great things. And if you're saved today, understand that God wants the same thing. But you will look at your life and say, God, man, I want to be used to my full potential in God. So look what the Word of God says concerning defects and how do you look at the priests. Look at Leviticus 21, verse 16, it reads, The Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Speak to the Aaron, saying, Whatever, whosoever he may the seed of their generation, that has any blemish, let him not approach to offer the bread unto his God. For whatever man he that has a blemish not approach, a blind man, a lame man, or a man with a flat nose, or anything super flawless, or a man that is lame, or a man that is broken-footed, or a man that is broken-handed, or crock-back, or a dwarf, or that, or he that has a blemish in his eye, or be a scurvy, or a scab, or he that has stones that are broken. No man that has a blemish in the seed of Aaron, and the priest shall come nigh to offer the offerings of the Lord made by fire. He, 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 he goes on to say, he has a blemish, shall not come to offer bread to his God. He shall eat the bread of his God, but both, both of the most holy and of the holy. Only he shall not go into the veil nor come nigh to the altar, because he has a blemish that he profane not my sanctuaries. For I, the Lord, do sanctify them. And Moses told it to Aaron and his sons and to all the children of Israel. Now this is what I want you to understand when you look at this day. There are 12 defects that God said, listen, if these guys have these defects, I can't use them at all. Doesn't mean they weren't saved. Because they can still be priests, okay? But I can't use them to what I want to use them at. So I want you to understand, in every church you got, there's people that you're here and you say, man, I want God to do this, I want God to do that. But you refuse to allow God to work in your life. And God wants to do so much more in your life. There are some people that are there and they only go so far with God. And the reason why is they don't allow God to heal them. So a lot of these things we're going to look at today, you understand, not only if you're not saved, God can heal you. And if you can get saved, God can fix these things. God can heal you and restore and build you. All these things I had in my life, and I'm telling you that right now so you can understand, I had every one of these defects in my life, physically and spiritually in my life. And I, 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 not physically, some of physically, but all spiritually, but some of even physically. But God began to heal me. God began to touch me. God began to do some great things in my life. So I want to encourage you, even if you're saved, you're not saved. It's very important you understand that God wants to use all of us. But I want you to put yourself under examination today. I want you to say, man, man, just think about you being a priest. And I'm called to be a priest in these last days. I'm called to witness for my family and be there for the world and let people know that God loves them. Now put yourself under the examination of God. And look at what the Spirit of God says today. I want you to understand it's not physical no more, but we know that it's spiritual today. The Bible says in Leviticus 21, 21, look what it says. No man that has a blemish of the seed of Aaron, and the priest shall come nigh to offer the offering of the Lord made by fire. He that has a blemish shall not come to offer the bread of his God. He shall eat the bread of his God, both the most holy and the holy. Only he shall not go to the veil, nor come nigh to the altar, because he has a blemish, that he will pay not my sanctions, for I am the Lord who sanctify them. Does it mean you're not saved, okay, if you have these defects? But what it does mean is that God can't use it the way He wants to use it inside your life. So I'm going to look at these 12 defects real quickly today to bring some understanding to you. Look what it says. You can press the next slide. Look what the next slide shows today. There are 12 spiritual defects. They're not physical anymore, but they're still spiritual. They're still in effect. You look at a blind man, a lame man, a man with a broken hand, a man with a broken foot, a man with a flat nose, a man with a limb or limbs too long, a hunchback, a dwarf, a man with a blemish in his eye, a man with a skin disease, a man with a scab, and a man that cannot reproduce or have children. Now think about what's this going on because some people look at say, man, God is messed up. It's not that God's messed up at all. Because God wanted people to understand, listen, I'm a holy God. You just don't come the way you want to come. You just don't act the way you want to act. There were things that were done physically in the Old Testament that are still spiritually now. Like, I'm not saying that God's against people that have these things at all. It's just that God has standards. And God says, listen, I don't want a blind man. A blind man can't lead my people at all. A blind man can't see what I want to do at all. And I want you to look at this day and look at it spiritually. So if you're blind, I'm not saying that God doesn't accept you. That's not at all. I'm talking about spiritual blind today. All